So in this video we're going to start building this frame. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to lay the bottom plate and connect all these arms. So the next thing we need to do, we need to assemble all the arms. The 10 millimeter screws need to go here and here and the longest screws which are 16 millimeters need to go here in the middle. Now all the arms are connected. We are going to place this all-in-one flight controller and transmitter in the center of the quadcopter. But first we are going to connect the motors to the frame. Inside each package we get in one counterclockwise motor and one clockwise motor. You can see the direction of the rotation here on the side of these motors. These are, these are 2300 kV motors. So now we are going to connect them to the frame using the provided screws. So I finished connecting all the motors and the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to connect the wires directly to the 4-in-1 ESC board. As you can see, the wires are too short and I will have to extend them in order to solder it to the board. So I finished soldering the motors to the 4-in-1 ESC board and I also covered it, covered it with plastic dip. Maybe you can see it here. It's a little bit hard because it's a, it's a clear coating. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add this all-in-one board. I've reviewed it about a few weeks ago but I haven't used it so now is the right time to use it. It's going to be placed here in this manner. I'm going to connect the signals to the correspondent port. So we have the S1, S2, S3 and S4 is in the top left. And I'm also going to solder, I'm going to cut here and I'm going to solder this straight to this connector because this one has a built-in PDB. So I've just added the XT60 connector and I'm also going to add this capacitor to prevent this problem with the OSD. So I just connected it to CleanFly to make sure that all the motors are placed correctly and I'm glad that I did assemble them correctly so we don't have any problem. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flash it to the newest version of Betaflight. In order to do so, you have to just press this boot button while connecting the USB port and then just go not to clean flight, you will have to go to better flight and just flash the newest version of the SP Racing F3. So I'm going to flash the 3.1.1. So now I can just hit flash and it will flash it. Okay, the program was successful. So we can just unplug the USB port, plug it again and we can connect to bit of light. So I just connected one side of the frame. In order to secure it, you will have to use one of these nine millimeters screw, then just put a spacer on it and it will be secured by using this nut, which is going to be placed here. So eventually I decided to use the XSR receiver, which I'm going to place here. I've connected the plus 5 volt is here in this connector, ground, and here is the signal, which is also black, and I just solder it directly to the XSR board. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to connect the camera. Okay, so I've soldered the camera to the front of the board. I've checked that everything is working fine. And the next thing we need to do, we need just to secure the camera to the sides of the frame and also put this top part of the frame. I've also connected this LED and also it has a built-in buzzer so now I actually have two buzzers on the quadcopter. I had to connect the buzzer, this wire, to the minus part of the buzzer so don't connect the plus, connect it to the ground. For securing the camera I'm going to put this cover. You have to put three of these spacers inside this plastic cover. By the way, I forgot to put the spacer here, but I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. 
I think it's pretty redundant. So let's put the plastic cover and weigh everything up. Okay, so first of all, I made a silly mistake. I accidentally put this one upside down, so it's supposed to be up because the battery is going to be placed here. I added the propellers, put the battery strap, and I also put the stickers that are on the top of the quadcopter in order to prevent the battery from slipping. And also I added on the bottom these landing pads. So overall I think it looks like a very nice quadcopter. Let's weigh it up. I don't think it's that light, but I hope it's going to be a very durable quadcopter. So the weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 339 grams. And if we had a 1300 mAh battery, this is the recommended size I think for this quadcopter, it's 496 grams. Just to compare it, we have here the Dynamics frame, which weighs 309 grams without battery. The Gepper Sea Hawk weighs 328 grams. And the Pico X weighs 51 grams without the 1300 mAh battery. Just joking. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to take this quadcopter for a test flight and it's also going to be a very first test flight of this all-in-one V4 HGLC board, which I have reviewed before. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.